because you have to need some knowledge <laughs> about technical things. <laughs> Question for you. Can wood burn? Are the firefighters here? Uh, sorry, sorry, for uh, fire investigators here. One. Okay. And I know two more, but they do not raise their hands. So three. <laughs> okay. Can wood burn? Who says yes, wood can burn? Yes. <laughs> and who says no? Okay. And a lot of people who do not know. It's going to be a tough hour. Um, wood cannot burn. Wood itself does not burn. The gases that came out of wood will burn, and, and wood itself, no. It can smolder, it can glow, but it does not burn. Nice to know. So that's easy. Oxygen, does it burn? Who says oxygen burns? Oh, nobody does to raise it. Who said oxygen does not burn? Everybody. Okay, a few. And the rest doesn't know it. Okay. It does not burn oxygen. You need it to maintain a fire, but it does not burn itself. I have a case, small study case, about incident we had 13 October, so a few weeks ago. We had a fire in a house, a house like this. It was living a 65 year old man. In the morning, around 7.30, the neighbors saw some fire. They called fire brigade and they went over. They didn't know at that moment if there was somebody inside, probably. So they sent two cars and a fire officer. Inside, they extinguished the fire. There was a person laying on uh, a bed. Uh, he couldn't speak anymore. He was still alive, but they brought him outside, brought him to the ambulance, and later on in the hospital he died. Um, we've done investigation together with the police because if there's a victim, we do in Holland investigation together with the police. We find three fires. So, and if you have three fires in three different spots, it means arson, deliberately set to fire. That's what we think with three fires. Unless there is a relationship between those three fires. This is the bed, and we saw a fire here. Behind the bed, so the bed is, and here's the bed. This is the hallway, and here's a fuse box, and here's another apparatus, and this is the bed. This is the mattress, they brought it outside, because mattresses can burn for, for hours, and you see some strange holes here in the mattress as well. This is the fuse box, so this is the second fire, and here's the third fire. And here, in between, it looks like there's nothing. And in between the bed and the fuse book, it looks like there's nothing. So, what happened here? Uh, this is, this is a, a apparatus that creates oxygen out of the air. So this man suffered from uh, bad health. He had problems with his lungs. He needed oxygen. So what he did, from this apparatus, he had the tube. He um, brought the tube uh, through the wall uh, in the fuse box to his bed. So this tube with oxygen goes to his bed. And he smoked. What we see in Holland is a lot of people who use oxygen, they're smoking as well. Some are on a scoot mobile and they smoke and oxygen on the back of a scoot mobile. Yeah. So this guy is smoking. What we think what happened is that he was smoking on the bed. Due to the cigarette, the mattress start to burn. Because of the smoke, he got unconscious and then the neighbor saw a uh, flinch. And we see some left over from the, from the tube. Here is some left over from the tube. And we can find a track from the tube uh, through the fuse box to the apparatus. And also we found a box of oxygen, a cylinder in his house. It's a cylinder, it's under pressure, so it's dangerous when it's in fire. 
but he had this for a reserve, but he didn't need it, it, it was still sealed. A um, few years ago, I invited a person from England, Jamie Novak, uh, sorry, from uh, America, and he knows a lot about fire investigation, and we did a test, and I have it, sorry, here on screen, I have to change. Why doesn't it? Yes, okay, start again. No. This is the right spot. This is Fred the Head. And Fred the Head can smoke, but he needs a little help to smoke. He has oxygen, a tube on his head. And what will happen if you use oxygen and you smoke? It does not always work at once, so a new cigarette. <laughs> you see that the cigarette is burning a little bit different. That's because oxygen in the air. Now one of the things that surprised most people here on oxygen, you usually are two to, two to four liters, right? You think if I crank it up to higher liters, is it going to go faster? It's going to come around his ear there. This is four liters. So that's two liters a minute. It's going pretty fast. Here's, here's four liters, five liters, six liters, nine liters, 12 liters. Slows down the more oxygen, opposite of what I thought. I thought the more oxygen you gave it, the faster it would burn down, and it's total opposite. There's 15 liters, it just kind of stays right at that end. Go so back down to two liters. It can burn inside the tube, and sometimes it skips some parts. But you can see if it's crisscross over itself, it can cut out sections of the hose and you'll have unburned loops where it may be crisscrossing itself. But look at all the black smoke that comes out of it. <laughs> so if you have more oxygen, the less faster it will burn. You have bigger flame, but the tube the burning, spreading is, is not as fast with high oxygen. And you see that it will skip some parts. The, the ground floor is not burned away everywhere. So there, it looks like there is no relation, but there is. And this is what happened in the house. And it's good to share this kind of knowledge. So if you have a case like this, you know what, what uh, could have happened. And what we do, what we do in Holland as well, is uh, like from a case like this, uh, we make a paper and we share this paper with all the firefighters that have been on this scenario, so they know what happens. Uh, that was a start. But why am I here for the work group? And I think it's the youngest work group. I'm not sure from the CTF fire investigation. And it started in 2016, 
Mr. Bercy from Hungary, he invited all 40 members from the CTIF to come together, the fire investigators, to see if we can learn more from each other, and we could. Uh, so in September 8, he went to the uh, CTF president and to the delegate board to ask if there could be a working group for fire investigations. And now we have a working group for fire investigation. And in June 2017, we had the first working group. And Mr. Betsy is here, so if you have more questions about the work group. And our main goal is uh, to change knowledge and to search for the cause and origin, but that's not always the most important part. Uh, what we want is to prevent serious fires and protect intervention of the firefighters. And what we do is gather information and data. And the last speaker said there is a lot of there is a gap between data you need and the data I think we have as fire in, uh, um, investigators. And it's good um, to work on it and collect more data and share more data. Um, we have there are 21 uh, countries now who have joined one of those meetings, not all together. There were 13 or 14 countries each time on the same time, but we have had more meetings, and together we have had 22, uh, 21 uh, countries. And where I'm working on is to create a map with all information, with information from fire investigating uh, countries. No oh, problems again. something strange between the switch of my computer and the screen. Yes, here it is. This is what I made, the map from Europe. And it would be nice if we could put all information in here. Uh, the mouse is not, I'm faster than the mouse. So, for example, we, if we click on uh, Denmark, then we have information about Denmark. How many fire that are there? How many fire investigators are there? Who is the contact person? If you look on the Netherlands, then this is the country where I live, the region where I live. And we have uh, three uh, fire investigators and uh, we've done uh, 60 investigations this year. So it would be nice, I think, if we could have this on the side of uh, the CTIF, so it's easier to find each other and to see what people are doing. So we have a meeting once a year. It rotates. First meeting was in Hungary. We had a meeting in Czech. At the beginning of this year, we had a meeting in, uh, in the Netherlands, in Holland. I organized the meeting. That's why I'm here to tell a little bit more about the meeting as well. And next year, um, it's still in progress, but maybe it's in Germany. And what, we could do, what did we uh, do? The last... Uh, or I become smaller, or this thing is... Going down. Um, what you do is exchanging experience, and this is one what I had is a training cell, and I got it from not last year, uh, this year, but last year from Denmark, and Denmark got it from uh, America, and this is a training cell, and in this cell you can make small uh, rooms, and you can put furniture in it from dolls, small furniture, and you can set it on fire. And you have marks, it looked like more in a bigger building, but it's very difficult to scale fire. It's not possible that you can use it. And it works uh, on um, 
a day when you have an, an open day, so to speak, on Fibergate, and all people can have a look at Fibergate, and you put this down, all children go there. They like it, and then you can get in discussion with the parents, and you can tell more about fire investigations. What we do is share knowledge about batteries, virtual reality training, I have an example of that, and uh, car fire investigation, I know in the check they have a person that's very good at car investigation, and I will invite him next year in February to come to us to tell more. So there is uh, already a lot of interchanging between the groups. And what we did in Holland was uh, every country, there were 40 countries, give a pitch about innovation, about the last things they uh, have done and they want to share with us. Uh, we had a work group for reality, we had a work group uh, how we educate people in, in the Netherlands, and we had uh, demonstrations of smoke gas explosions. The next day we visited the fire academy in the Netherlands. And what we did there is tell the people what kind of project we have in the Netherlands. And what we do is we set houses on fire, put all kinds of measurement tools inside to see what the smoke is doing, how the smoke is behaving. Um, we collect uh, data, we uh, do some things with smoke gas uh, cooling. And uh, just before the summer, we had an elderly house with 60 rooms in it, and we set some rooms on fire. A couch, two weeks, every day, two couches, couches and we message. Uh, the smoke replacement and if it's better to get someone out of his uh, uh, living room first or leave the do door closed and get the others out of the room. So first uh, uh, have intervention on the room where it burns or leave the room, the room closed and save all the people. What's better to do? Well, it's a lot of information but it's uh, for another time maybe. Um, there are a lot of differences in the countries. In, for example, Hungary and Czechia, is, um, it is arranged by law that fire investigators can do investigations. That's not the case in Holland. In Holland, the police is doing investigations. Then insurance company will come, and then we may come. But we have very good contact with the police, so we can do uh, investigations together with them. For example, in Czechia, the, the fire investigators are doing the research and they give the report to the police. If there's not a victim, they give, they make the report. It's not the case in, in, in Holland. Um, in Denmark, the police is doing uh, research, and in Denmark, they do not have a fire investigator anymore. Some are doing only wildfires. Some do no investigation at all, and some just started, like Belgium. They started two years ago. In jail, Belgium is collecting information. Uh, they've been in Hungary for one week. Uh, they've been with us a few days to collect information how to set up fire investigations. And some countries have their own lab. This is from Hungary. Um, if you do investigation together with the police, the police does not always share uh, the information or the outcome from investigation. So in Hungary they do not want to wait for the police, so they have their own lab. And there's also a volunteer with a dog, and they can use the dog. And we have our drones. But. Uh, and what you do more and more is to make mock-ups or to make complete 3D models from buildings to see what happened inside the building, about smoke spreading, uh, about uh, fleeing of the people. And that's, uh, 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 most countries are starting to do this kind of in, uh, investigation. Um, we're here in the Czech Rep uh, Republic, uh, Republic, so a little bit more information about uh, the Czechs. They have a 24 a shift fire investigators, so there's always a fire investigator which you can call and will come. There are two types. Ones who are uh, working on fire investigations almost all the time and the doubles. They have a different function. For me the same, I'm a fire investigator, but I'm also a fire investigator. I also teach on a school, so I do more than only fire investigation. There are 326 members of fire investigation in Czechia. 
What's nice to know is uh, the average uh, practice they have is 13 years. In Holland we only started 10 years and I think our practice is around 4 years. So there's more practice in, in, in Czech Republic. Um, and they have a training model. In Holland, our trade, we're still working on a training model because it's not perfect and we look to other countries how they have arranged it. They have training centers. And they have an education system, uh, courses from weeks and restore courses every five years. So that's good. It's not what we have in Holland. In Hungary they have also restore, uh, restore um, uh, uh, courses. <coughs> and fires. Big number of fires. Two, 20,000 fires average every year and killed person by fire, uh, 110 average. That's, I think, a lot for a country with 10 million people. Uh, Hungary, also 10,000, uh, 10 million persons, 21 regions. Uh, also 24 hour shifts for fire investigators and there are around 120 fire uh, investigators. <coughs> the average practice is uh, 6.4 years, although in Hungary they do fire investigations for I think 50 or 60 years also. And they're working on their um, education and the education changed, I believe, last year in different modules. So there are five modules, the three modules, every fire investigator has to follow those three modules. And the last one is a special one. Uh, 2018, I do not have the complete numbers, but uh, the number of fires, 25,000, it was 20,000 in Czechia, so a little bit comparable. And I'm not sure if you can see it right, but some uh, findings of how fires start, what's the cause of the fire. And fire deaths, and that's well, also around 100, 110, but it's going down. And I know in Hungary they're working on the prevention um, to get those deaths uh, to have less deaths. So they're working on a prevention system. What they do as well in Hungary is they have every year they have a competition for fire investigators, it's national. I know our chairman wants to make it international, to have from different countries fire investigators that will have a competition. <coughs> and in the competition, uh, you can have a scenario like this, and then you have to find out what's the cause and the fire's origin, and there's a witness, and, and also uh, in this uh, competition there are small parts, you have to look at it, is it cause of origin, and photography is inside. Uh, I was there two weeks ago, and this is um, a smoke box for smoke to, to show how smoke gas explosions occur. And we use this in Holland in our training um, center. And I showed this in Hungary and they take this over in their training center. And th this is a box with three small uh, rooms in it. There's EPS, police terrain, uh, in the roof. You set fire in one box. And uh, it's an isolation material, the EPS will spread through the roof to a room where there's no fire. We only have a little candle inside. And what you see, if you create enough heat, smoke gases will uh, go to a different room and, you, and can cause an explosion if there is an uh, ignitable thing, a spark, a refrigerator, whatever. This has killed three people in Holland. Uh, 2010 and the years after we have um, a lot of injured people because of smoke gas explosions and with this box we can show what a smoke gas explosion is. So we share knowledge between uh, the, the fire investigation groups. Uh, the Netherlands, we have 70 million uh, people, 24 regions, Mark said something about it already yesterday, 
Uh, we have, that's different in, in Czech Republic, I know we have women uh, firefighters, but Susan will tell more about it later on. We have 300 professional firefighters, women, and 1,200 women voluntarily firefighters. We have around 98 fire investigators. This is uh, a map, 10 years uh, anniversary, it was uh, last year. 10 years of fire investigation in the Netherlands. And before, uh, 10 years before, we didn't do anything about investigation. So I always say that 10 years ago, the fire brigade didn't know anything about fire. Because we go to a fire, extinguish the fire, and we left. An insurance company or the police is going, did research. Um, in the Netherlands, it's not by law that we can do research, but uh, we have to learn from our own interventions. And to learn from our own interventions, you have to do research. So it's a, a twist in the law, but we can do um, investigation. And we have um, 13, almost 1300 investigations in 10 years. Um, maybe the other countries do it in one year, but we're still going. And this is the, the time pattern of what we achieved in 10 years. And we had a big party, of course. Um, fire death. Fire deaths, we have around 30, 40 dead persons uh, a year. In Czech and Hungary, it's around 110. With 10 million people, we have 70 million people. And we have around 40 deaths a year. Sometimes more dead in one uh, apartment. And we have a lot of data. We gathered 10 years of data of um, fires with dead persons, and we know 6 out of 10 is mid. We know the average age. Uh, we know in which part of the house they died. We have a lot of information. It's a report, it's also in English. and. Uh, if you like, I can send uh, a link of it. Uh, place of origin, we know that the most fires start in the kitchen. Sometimes the food starts to burn, sometimes it's the oven uh, where grandma uh, store their plastic uh, 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 pans or plastic uh, uh, things in the oven because we do not use the oven and the grandchildren will come and play with the knobs and uh, often turns on and you can have a fire. Uh, living room, bedroom and so on. Education in the Netherlands, you have an 18-day course. And in those 18 days you get, you learn things about photography, chemics, uh, patterns, fire spread and so on. Uh, but we do not have a program to be, to stay uh, um, well educated. We work on it. We hope to have a program within two years, an uh, education program, so we can um, restore it every two or three years of training. Where we're working on is to switch again. On a 3D model. This is what we. Uh, yes. This is uh, in a, a house we have for fire investigators where we can train them. And this is a room we prepared as a small living room and we set it on fire. And you can put glasses on, virtual reality glasses, and then you're really inside this room and you can have a look at parts. It's a way of learning how to do investigation. And um, this is with a chair and we can remove the chair and have a look again in the situation and what's behind the chair. We can pick up things, details, paper, It's a little bit slow in responding. The 
some reason. So we can pick up things and have a look at the lamp in the window. I can go to the bathroom, have a look in the bathroom to see what happened here. And what I see is there are two fires, one fire in the bathroom and one fire in the living room. And is there a relation between them? Maybe through the flames? But there are no indicators that it has been very hot on the ceiling here. So, no indicators from fire spreading. Um, that fire <laughs> started in the living room due to fire spreading. But I have two fires. And where did it start? In the chair or in the, uh, in the bedroom? I can also have a look, I can remove the mattress and have a look again. And here's a lamp. Fast again, yeah. I can have a look at the lamp. Something strange here. Well, it's a little bit black here. So it has laid down on the mattress. But when? It fell down or what happened here? Well, we can have a look on different kind of parts and um, I can also play the movie What Happened Here. Is that any, someone has an idea what happened here? Maybe I go a bit too fast to the pictures, but. This is how it looked like before the fire. And I will show you how our building looked like. This is our building. <coughs> Inside this building we can make those scenarios I, sh I showed you. And here on top is the scenario. By the way, this is our training field with all kind of other training modules. And I can show you what happened inside. The case is that the fire started in the bathroom. Not working. I will do it like this um, because system is too slow. The, the fire started in the bathroom here. The lamp lay on the mattress. There was in the house a cleaning lady, and she discovered the uh, the fire. She removed the blanket on the mattress and wanted to bring it outside. Halfway, she dropped the blanket because it's become too hot. So we have a fire here, and she brought the blanket with her. She dropped it over here and she ran away. And then the investigators have to find out what, ha what happened here. Well, you can ask the lady who cleaned the room what happened, but unfortunately she is, in this case, in hospital. So you cannot ask her what happened. And this is the case we use also for uh, examination for fire investigators in Holland. This is the house and we built it uh, five years ago. We do a lot of experiments in it. There's also a sprinkler system in it, so we can do uh, um, tests with sprinklers as well. Um, and our main goals in, in Holland is to find uh, an, uh, the cause and origin, to find the cause and origin. The cause and origin is nice to know. It's not necessary for us to know uh, the origin. That's for the police and insurance company. What's more important for us is to know what the fire spreading is, because we can learn from fire spreading. And what we do is checking uh, preventive uh, requirements. If a door has to withstand a fire 60 minutes, does it work? 
and we look at the fire intervention. Did they do the right job? But that's difficult because when we are going to start to find or to say something about firefighters, probably they will not give us information uh, anymore because if we say we did it wrong, it doesn't work. So we have to find out a good way to tell the firefighters what they could have done better. Choose the right door or the left door or, or <coughs> what you sometimes see in a field is that if we have a house, uh, a house with a roof, there's a lot of water, a lot of hoses on the roof, but a roof is made to get rid of the water. So it's no use to put water on the roof is the, uh, uh, if the roof is intact. So you only have to show a picture like that and then they know by themselves that they didn't do the right things. Um, what we also do is, um, this was um, the week before this week, there is a burn foundation, persons who have seriously uh, wounds. Uh, there's a week program on school in the country and uh, they tell the story what happened with them. And we have made a movie in our training house. And this is this is for children. Uh, and the question down under in the screen is stated that how do you think this fire started? And it's the very first. Also, a vlogger that, that makes a movie on it for the internet for the young people. What I did, I prepared a telephone. There are some wires you do not see, it's going through the couch the other side of the wall and I overloaded the telephone so it started to burn. But what we want to tell people is if you want to uh, upload your telephone or your laptop or your iPod, do not do it on a couch or on a bed or do it on a hard surface. Place it on, on, on a table but not on your bed. It can cause fire, it can cause death. How much time do I have left? Five minutes. Five minutes. Not more. Okay. Uh, another case. Um, uh, it's BMW with something wrong here. We had a fire in the beginning of this year with BMW. This is the garage where the BMW is stored, and this is uh, the fire brigade. And it happened at night, about 2 o'clock at night, and there was a very big explosion. The firefighter, of the, the, the commander here, wake up because of the bang. He opened the curtains and he saw a fire here outside. So, uh, and, and, and one minute later they get uh, a response from the emergency room that the fire detection system went off in this uh, building and uh, they get alarmed for this building. So they drove to this building and they hadn't, they almost had no time to dress well, to put on the, 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 the air and so on. And this is uh, the garage with the, the car behind the glass over here. More information about time. And here I have. This is what happened in the night. It's an electrical car, 42 kilowatts. When they arrived, what they did, what they did very well is to leave the window inside, to prepare their things first. So they brought, they uh, 
bring the houses to uh, the hoses to the, this place, prepare well, because if you break a window, the fire can grow much faster. And when they're ready, they break the window. You can choose the front door, but it takes more time. And the best thing to do is uh, bring the water there where the fire is. There's the hose, low pressure, 250 liters. And what you see is in a few minutes, they extinguish the fire. And it's a lithium ion battery. How come that they extinguished the fire within minutes? So how does it come that they extinguish the fire so fast? <coughs> and <coughs> how did it come that there was an explosion? There was a hotel on the other side and the windows were shaking. The building is intact, you do not see anything in the inside, but there were cameras, automatically cameras that, that um, start to um, uh, collecting data when it's moving. And because of the shaking of the moving, the data started, the camera started to, to, to um, collect data, but not in this, uh, unfortunately. This is a second car. The car that burned away is, was standing over here, and this was a second BMW i3. You see some marks here from the fire spreading. It was at five million costs uh, fire. This is the car they brought it outside, same there. This is, or better to say was, a BMW i3. What we did <coughs> is to find out if it was connected on the grid and where the fire started. We removed the battery, and to remove the battery, we left the complete car, put it on pallets, unscrewed the battery, and left the car again. And then we had a battery. And we looked at the battery, <coughs> and what we find out is that it really started inside the battery. But there is still a discussion going on with the insurance company and BMW, w, who is going to pay for the damage. So it's the, the battery is laying somewhere on a safe place, and until they are ready with their uh, arguing uh, research, further research will be done. This is the other uh, BMW. We removed the battery from this one as well because we were not sure if this was a stable situation. So we removed the battery. And what we saw by this one, this one was connected to the grid because we found the plug and the plug is intact. It means that there has been uh, a device inside. But this one was plugged and on the grid. This is from the BMW that burned away completely. It was not connected to the grid. And this is the battery, the good battery, and here together, which in the battery there is an exhaust valve. Uh, if batteries start to burn inside, this is the area where the gas is leaving the battery. It burned away completely. And what happened in this case is that the battery started to burn inside gases came out of the battery, the gases came into uh, um, the shop, mixed with oxygen to become a perfect uh, burnable gas uh, um, 
uh, cloud. Then, the certain, on, on, on a certain moment, flames came out of the battery and set uh, the burnable uh, gases on fire, and that causes an explosion. Okay, I have more, but this is it. And what I think is that fire departments can no longer work without fire investigators. We need them for data. We need to know how fire started, uh, causes origin, but uh, especially fire spreading. And I think save citizens through skilled fire investigators. Uh, thank you. Uh, next work group is hopefully in Germany. And I hope all 40 members of the CTI app will be there with two fire investigators. <laughs> so keep an eye on the CTI for website. Thank you.